Hey everyone, welcome back to TJ Lavin's Ultimate BMX. I'm in Cedic, and with me again is Blank Tester. Hey, how's it going? So now we're heading into the last third of the game, the hard versions of the levels. So, once again, we'll be revisiting Street, Envert, and Dirt, but now with another expansion to each environment, and now with six challenges. You can see Higher Points Challenge, MTV Logo, gotta collect 16 Silver Sprockets, two levels specific, but now we have to collect BMX. Oh, cool. Yeah, kind of like Tony Hawk, you got Skate, you know, Matt Hoffman, you got Trick. In TJ Lamp, you got BMX. And so again, immediately, the new part of the level is right in front of you. You can <laughs> see there's a B up on that awning. Yeah. And there was something about jumping on the roof and smashing the roof lights. Well, the only thing is, this dumpster truck that looks like it should be the ramp up is currently, uh... Not really a ramp. And so now again, it is. this is this is where I thought this is where I legit thought the game had fucked up again. So my first playthrough I spent a while, every single run, crashing onto the truck and then jumping up. When the entire time you see that red switch. That's so small. It's so small and it's on the side of the truck that's facing the wall. That's why would you ever run on at, at least make it on the other side where you might see it. Or no. even accidentally bump into it. So once again, a complete accident eventually led me to crash into the switch while trying to jump up onto the truck. And so here, once again, I'm saving you guys a shitload of time. Um, but yeah, that's how you uh, get up onto the roofs. And up onto the roofs, there's, well, a new path, a bunch of sprockets, the B and the M, and course the uh roof lights and this is how you'll get to the mtv logo as well so mm. yeah ah <sighs> so now that that's out of the way i just want to say you know in in games like this or really just games in general you know when you unlock a new area a mm -hmm. big new area you know there's this feeling that a game should give you a feeling of excitement maybe anticipation you right know, like Oh man, I can't wait to see what's in that area. Yeah. You know, so something brand new has opened up for you that'll provide right. hours of entertainment. Feeling a, a feeling of familiarity with a feeling of, uh, you know, something new, something yeah. unseen. Here in TJ Lavin, by this point, every new area just left me with a feeling of dread. Like, oh my god. There's a new place in this area that I have no idea what to do with. Mm. With challenges that could be spread out anywhere and all over the place. Uh, yeah. I just... I don't know. The game had really... I don't want to try... I don't want to harp too much, but... Like, yeah, just loading this up, and especially again with trying to figure out what the hell to do. Because once you're up on the roofs, your first time up, it might not be obvious where really anything is. Yeah. So there was just... I didn't enjoy it, you know? That's that's why I kind of said, I liked this game back when the levels were at their smallest, because mm. they were still pretty darn big. Yeah. You could definitely have added new challenges into the areas of the levels we had. Mm-hmm. Or... You know, maybe with some addition. Or um, if you wanted to, like, make new areas, just make new levels. Like, completely new levels of the same size. But now, especially by this point, we'll see that the game gave me, what, two and a half minutes? And that might be good to do one challenge. One or two challenges. Uh. Like, the game really doesn't do a good job in letting you hit a bunch of things in kind of rapid succession. Hmm. Um, so yeah, the MTV logo is all the way over there. And another thing specifically about this level is, you know, and you're not really going to see this as much because, again, in this recording, I just kind of went to hit things, you know? Mm -hmm. Knew what to do, get it over with. But, like, there's some jumps, some shortcuts that are almost agonizingly just not possible. Like, if that Ugh. makes any sense. Like, you saw, once I got onto that first roof, I jumped up in the corner yeah. to get a sprocket. If you get a ton of speed, I've done this once. You can hit that jump, 
go really high, grind on the roof on top, and then just jump over to the roof with the MTV logo on it. Uh. And it's it feels like such a good shortcut. Or then, after that jump, when I rode up the ramp, jumped in the corner, and was just barely not able, and I've never done this, just barely not able to grind that roof to my left. Uh. I was like six inches off being able to. Oh, um... Right now, I'm finding flocks of pigeons, basically. Oh. This this challenge is actually decent. I mean, the flocks are never the same size. Like, you saw I hit a group of three, and then just, like, a group of one. Yeah. But, you know, they're, they're all over the place in a reasonable, you know, reasonable places. Right. You'll see, more, you'll see more pigeons later on as I'm on the roofs more. And there's actually another set over in that big drainage ditch that goes around the warehouse. <laughs> um but, uh, what was I getting at? But yeah, just like, there are these things that almost feel like shortcuts, but they're not. Whereas, compare back to Tony Hawk 2 again. I know I compared Tony Hawk 2 earlier with wall rides. Yeah. And being able to jump during a wall ride. In Tony Hawk 1, maybe they didn't expect you to be able to do that. But in Tony Hawk 2, here, this jump, you see how I uh, almost got that? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That that would save so much fucking time. I think they're I think they did that so that maybe like you would get an idea that there was something up there. But like why not just make it so you can go up? But what so what I'm getting at is in Tony Hawk 2, they knew that you could wall ride and jump at the top of a wall ride and made it so that you had to to get to certain ledges. Like they leaned into that that hmm. was possible, and so they made shortcuts that seemed pretty easy and pretty uh, effortless. Yeah. You know, like, you got to do cool shit that, you know, when you were skilled, gave you more opportunities. But if you weren't skilled, you know, if you were six years old and riding around, you were still able to get everywhere by taking the 100% intended path. Right. Um... Meanwhile, in TJ11, you're pretty much stuck with the intended path. Hmm. Um, but yeah, so that's how to get break all five of the windows. You know, take this long-ass path. Ugh. Like I said, I was going for that, and you saw that that still took me a minute and a half. Yeah, that, that, was, that was f very long. Yeah. Like, again, Tony Hawk 2, I'm not saying everyone's supposed to be able to do this, or really the early Tony Hawks, but like... If you're really good, you could just go bam, 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 get a ton of uh, level challenges done pretty yeah. quick. TJ11, again, especially with this, like, 16 sprockets one, is going to take the entire time. Yeah, because, like, this this one, uh, this game is, like, it, like the Tony Hawk games have a ton of speedrun potential, and that's why the speedruns are actually really interesting to watch. This game doesn't have a lot of speedrun potential because it's so, like, I don't know, the levels are too big, you don't have enough time, all the design choices are in service of the idea that you're going to do each level several times to get different challenges yeah. done, and that's like, that's not as satisfying. Yeah, the levels are really designed with, you know, like I said, no shortcuts. Uh, yeah. They're kind of designed very obviously and plainly, so that you will follow the path. Except for the uh, the for switches. The no, except for the switches. Like the well, red I mean, switches you have to hit to open up level areas. That stuff's not obvious at all. <laughs> it's not really obvious enough. No. Um, if that didn't so kill yeah. your speed, that would have been kind of a cool line. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, hard versions of the levels just... I mean, the same... same. I've, we've said everything. Yeah. Tuh, shit. Some of this That's seems not like... a good feeling when you've said everything and you have, uh, I guess, two minutes left. But... Some, some of what I'm seeing here kind of reminds me of, like, when I would make Halo maps in Forge. I, a lot of times, instead of playtesting them, I would just kind of, like put the pieces down and think like okay there's a line that you can walk here you know and just think like this is the way you know you, you can do it like this and I wouldn't think like how does it actually play because like you really do have to find out how other people 
interact with the environment. It might just seem obvious to you, or you might have just put stuff in a way that, like, from the map editor seems like it makes sense, but then when you're actually in the game, in the moment, you, you know, it's not as easy or it's not as obvious. Yeah. You know, because your camera view is different. You know, while everything's moving, you have a very different view of the environment than when everything's perfectly still and you have time to just analyze the environment. You know, and that's kind of the feeling I get from the level design here. And meanwhile, I don't want to turn this into, like, some goofus and gallant kind of thing. And also, this is going to sound really nerdy. Uh, but since I was part of, like, the trick-jumping scene back in Halo 2 and 3 and Reach, you know, any maps I'd make, I'd always look for the kind of, you know, back-around kind of trick jumps you could do to make things easier on you. Yeah. And I'd, I'd have fun putting in there, putting those in there just so I could do them. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, hard mode street. Um, once you know where everything is, you just go and do it. It's figuring out where everything is that's a big problem. Um, again, this is where I am saving you guys probably hours in each level, showing you, oh, there's the switch. Oh, there's how you get to the rooftops. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so join us next time when we go to the hard version of the vert environment and uh, we get a little splish splash action on a water slide. That sounds interesting, right? I'm trying to make it sound interesting. Mm. Yeah, join us then. <laughs>